Hello guys! So in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to make the floating damage feature. In case you have the weapon system already and you need to find a way to visualize the damage taken by your enemy, this tutorial is for you. Probably you know that the most common way is to use an actor with the 3D widget, but this uh, method is, uh, isn't actually kinda performance friendly and it requires a lot of different steps to be taken that we can actually emit. So I propose to use the Noegra particle system with some render targets. The first step is to make the material that we're gonna apply on our sprite. So as you can see, logic is kinda simple. We only need to have the particle color. RGB goes for the uh, emissive color. Alpha will control our opacity. We also need to define the texture parameter here because uh, we need to store and transfer the data from the blueprint into this material. So, press right mouse button, look for the texture sample. Also with the right mouse button, simply convert this sample to the parameter. Name here and in your blueprint should be the same, otherwise anything won't work. Your render target should be only one channel, because we only need to have the black and white mask. Also make sure that you saturate your opacity uh, channel because uh, uh, we need to have the values from 0 to 1, they are allowed. This material is translucent and the shading model is unlit. It means that uh, this material will be visible even at night. Next step is to make the Niagara system. Create the new one and it should contain an empty emitter. At the left side of your screen you need to define three different variables. The first one is the linear color, the second one is the vector 2D, and the last one is the material uh, interface. So press on the plus button and look for those variables. Linear color, vector 2D, material interface. Now select the properties of your emitter and go from the CPU to GPU uh, computation sim. You also need to define the bounds to be fixed, because otherwise your Negra system simply won't uh, understand how to handle itself once it's outside of the uh, camera's point of view. At emitter state, you should go from the system life cycle to the self. Uh, the loop behavior should be once and duration should be fixed. Uh, I went with the value of 1.5 second. The spawn burst should be uh, 1, because we only need one particle at a time. In the initialized particle module, under the left side, press on the drop menu, look for the current loop duration. It means that the emitter will last as long as the Niagara system will, uh, will be alive. For the color, uh, here you define the user variable that we created seconds ago. The same goes for the sprite size, but the sprite mode should be non-uniform. So it means that uh, the design is the following. The height of the sprite should be constant, but the width should be defined with the number of digits that we have in our incoming damage. I also added some random rotation, just uh, let's call it the visual sugar. I also added velocity in a cone to have more interesting uh, effect. So uh, the cone is kind of white. It means that if I have a lot of uh, incoming damage points, uh, the spread should be uh, better. Once you add velocity, you should also add solve forces and velocity module. Otherwise, your Niagara system will burst with the warning. Those two models aren't uh, necessary, but it's also the visual sugar. So the behavior is the following. Once my particle is spawned, it pop-ups with a higher value of size, and then uh, after the short period, it smoothly uh, shrinks out. The same goes with the color. Here on the right side, you may press and select the template of the behavior. Also, uh, this particular module has the Q 
key data of 0.5, but by default it's 1. It's just uh, how I design it. In the sprite renderer, here under the material user domain, select uh, the user attribute that we created earlier. The mine is called floating damage material. The last part here is to complete the blueprint logic. We need to have two separate functions. The first one we uh, define and calculate the data, and in the second one we transfer the data to our render target, material, and the Niagara system. So I don't really care how you get your damage. In my case, uh, I simply use the line trace by channel and uh, extract all the data from the hit result. Uh, you need to make those functions, like uh, maybe like I did it, uh, it's in the weapon or in your projectile. It doesn't really matter. So for the first function, which is called init floating damage data, you need to create four different uh, variables. The first one is string, next to are the vector 2D, and the last one is the linear color. So the logic here uh, isn't necessary to replicate at all. Uh, this part, just for those who want to have the same results that I uh, that I showed in the uh, beginning of this video. So, damage calculated, uh, if it's flawed, uh, let's say damage of 3, we'll have 3 uh, digits. So it's going to be 3.0. And the more digits we have, uh, the more impact on the system it will have. And it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to look pretty much Great. So we need to withdraw uh, extra stuff such as point and zero and even the uh, minus sign. So for this I use the apps. Next one, if my damage isn't equal zero, I go with this string. But if it's so, let's say if your damage system is based on the distance and uh, the damage is nearly equal zero, you can go with the following. Uh, strings like immune or miss. It also depends on the gameplay design that you have. Uh, the first vector to D, which is called damage dimensions, here we define the size of the sprite that we're gonna apply in our Niagara system. Okay, so for this, from the string we get the length, so number of digits or signs that we have. Next, we need to multiply it by the constant value and provide the same uh, value here to the vector to dy uh, pin. So it means that the width is defined by the length of the string, but the height is the same. Uh, the next one is the damage offset. So we simply divide this uh, vector to d by 2. And it means that the render target should be in the center of our material. And the last one is how you're gonna uh, colorize your particle. So if the damage is, isn't equal to zero, I'm gonna with the yellow one. But if it's uh, zero, like I have immune or miss states, it's gonna be simple white. Next, draw floating damage. So sequences here as uh, sequences here are just for the better visual understanding how the uh, flow works. So the code is tidy and we don't have any overlapping wires. The first one we need to create the render target, and the width and height is defined by the dimensions of our sprite. So uh, it's going to be dynamically changed. We don't need to create uh, particles uh, with the extra data. We only need to have the exact uh, exact size of the string. We also need to create the dynamic material instance. Uh, the parent should be our material, this one. And uh, here we set texture parameter uh, with the name here, the same name should be in your material, like this one. So it means that our material is, uh, is updated with the new render target, this one. Next logic is actually drawing to the render target. So it begins with the following. From render target uh, variable, 
we call the function called begin draw canvas to render target. Next one is to call the function called draw text. Here we define the font. So the render text is our variable, this one. The screen position is our offset. Also, we need to uh, select both checkboxes, center X, center Y. So in terms of the UI layout, uh, they're not going to be at the top left corner, but uh, let's call it anchors. So the number uh, will be at the 0 0.5, 0 0.5, except of instead of using 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we should uh, call a function called and draw canvas to render target. So this kind of logic uh, gonna transfer the floor data from our damage into a string and render it into the texture. The last is to create the Niagara system. This one. Provide the location of our impact that we have from our uh, hit result. And provide the following uh, variable setters. The first one is the floating damage text tint. This one. And the value is our variable from this part, this one. And the same goes for next two attributes for the damage dimension and our material interface. And that's it. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial and I'm gonna uh, place the project sample to my Patreon. So the link is under this video. And as always, uh, please subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback. Uh, in case if you want to support me monetarily, please uh, follow up uh, to my Patreon and buy a subscription. And see you soon, guys.